Today uh, is my final event for Heritage Plus Eastbourne. And so all previous participants have been invited and uh, I think most have come along. And what's happening today is, is our school's day. My granddad did machine guns, butterflies, and the children were put into groups of small groups of nine and we were assigned a role either in the Navy, the Air Force or the Army and then we had to come up with a squadron name, design flags, design labels, logos and then we had to navigate ourselves around the museum to find clues to the word, the codes and then send those codes back over to other groups using semaphore. So that, that's it from start to finish today. I got in touch with Veronica Payne back in the summer because I liked the sound of the project and we met up and discussed dancing lessons with Dave Romain who came in and he, used to, he came in once a week for quite a long time, I think it was over two terms. Uh, so they learned different strolls, foxtrot, jive, and then that culminated in a party at the local church where the WRVS members were also invited along. And prior to that, the WRVS members came into our school and did some work with our class. We spoke to each other, are interviewing, asked them questions about the war. So the children learnt lots of things from the primary sources. It's more um, educational because they they give you mo explain more than what a book or a um, or a, a um, something off a computer would show, tell you. Well, we was um, all shown to desks, and most of the children have got questions all written down in a book or on paper, and um, then we had to give them the answers and information that they wanted, and they were very surprised, some of them, and the uh, questions they came up with were very good, actually. We just talked about them, and then we had our books to write down notes about what they'd done. And then the next session when they came in, did the same tea and cake, so it was quite social, and then some little art activities. I think it was a couple of days after we had a tea dance, so we made poppies and um, evacuee name tags, and um, I think the, elder, um, the evacuees really enjoyed themselves, and so did I. I think it, it kind of closed that gap a bit between the young and the old. It brought them in together and talking together in a way that they never would have if that opportunity wasn't there. So uh, the, old, the WRVS members were very complimentary of the children, which was quite a boost for them. And the younger people were really interested in getting their signatures and asking them questions, which made the, them feel worthy, that, you know, it made them feel like they've, they're appreciated for what they've been through. Um, so yeah, I think for both sides, it was a really positive experience. I think it's really, really important for communication between uh, older people and younger people. It's really good for them to just share their experiences and see that they have got things in common, things that they can tell people, um, and just build up a relationship with a different generation. I think it, it really works well, very, very well. I think the use of technology has been really important to the Heritage Plus project. For example, with our oral history recordings, volunteers have been taught how to use the latest digital recorders and how to edit their recordings to put extracts up on our website. In other workshops, people have been taught how to use digital video cameras and editing software. So I think it's been one of the strengths of the project that it's really embraced technology in this way. Well, the Heritage Plus website really serves two purposes. On the one hand, it's a place where we've 
documented all the different activities and events and workshops that we've run and all the products that have come out of the workshops so all the all the books and films and everything that's been produced through the project is accessible from our website and I hope that will be a, a really useful resource for people. The other role of the website is as an archive of the memories and photographs and stories that we've collected throughout the project and within that there's a, a fascinating range of historical material. We've got extracts from oral history interviews, film footage, people's personal stories and photographs up there. I walked up the lane from the station carrying my case and as I say there were soldiers everywhere. I got indoors. I think the website's been a really great tool for enabling some of our volunteers and participants to gain some really useful experience and learn new skills in things that they, they might not have uh, previously had any experience in. And I think it's been a, a really great way to introduce, particularly to our, a lot of our participants who've never used the internet before, it's a great way to introduce them to it and to show them that there are things there on the internet that, that are perhaps of interest to them and uh, perhaps in the past they felt excluded from that world or, or there was nothing of interest for them in that world and I, I think the website's really opened that up to them and uh, I think it, it, it's been a, a really great great way to um, to show people that this is something that they can participate in. I appreciate that the reminiscence projects that kind of come and go and probably have some you know benefits for the people who are who, who are who are participating in them but what I'm really hopeful with with this project is actually the the artifacts that have been created and the pictures that have been digitized that's going to be a kind of legacy for the project the value of doing this is immense for those who take part um, it's incredibly rewarding um, to see participants coming in each week looking forward to a session um, having been thinking about a topic or a subject you know before before the next week's session and then coming in and sharing that with a group a group of that who've then become friends who've then become a support um, it's been really important to people's lives I think it becomes increasingly important doesn't it as you get a bit older often I mean I feel it myself personally I remember when I was younger and you have your personal history and even things like you remember your grandparents telling you stories and at the time you sort of think oh you know oh it's not interesting but you become more conscious of it as life goes on you know sort of why am I the way I am or why are things the way they are and that's all related to your history so I think personal history can be a starting point for people and it's fundamental to everything isn't it really to know who you are and where you've come from. People can sort of look at their own lives, look at other people's lives and not just think mine's worse or better but sort of see where they fit themselves in the grand scheme of things. Community health is something that comes from a sense of identity and self-esteem, not just, you know, from not being a piece of, or, you know, so it's, it's you know, and it's shared with, with all of these different organisations in the community. And so this is a very complete project from that point of view because it targeted um, different age ranges. It um, supported younger people to engage with older people and vice versa and understand each other and it supported heritage organisations to understand how to reach um, groups that they normally wouldn't um, and it also helped in terms of people developing skills and building on the skills and knowledge they had before you know um, so through all of the volunteering and you know the training for the volunteers and so on so I've, I've felt that it's a really complete project and it's a really it's really inspiring